Well, I'm not even sure what the big news is anymore at this point. Is it the fact that a new collab unit named Shaltier dropped and she's actually a really, really good DPS? Or is it the fact that we just got a notes on a ba information on a balance patch that's coming and it's probably the best one we've seen in a long fucking time? Whatever, I'll try to cover it as soon as I can whenever we get through this, because we're going to go through this really, really fast. So, Moon Bunny, Dominil, Briar, Witcheseria, Savior Aiden. I brought Dark Corvus solely for the simple, like, situation of, hey, what if it's a really fast Savior Aiden? And Dark Corvus is my absolute best dark unit that baits light, because you pretty much straight up can't one-tap him. However, the Briar Witch goes first, then we also activate the Elena S2, we push up, we have invincibility. Well, congratulations, boys! We're primed and ready to just do some killing. Which, that's what we gon' fucking do. Yeah, you know, 29k, you know, casual 29,000 damage onto a Savior Aiden. That's actually pretty normal. <laughs> that you would say, that, you know, just looking at those kind of numbers. We're not looking at mitigation. That's pretty much Savior Aiden. Savior Aiden's built with like, just absolute fucking nothing but squish. But yeah, Shaltier is pretty fun whenever you see the good opportunity to use her, which guess what? There's a lot of good opportunities to use her just for the simple fact that you can pretty much just annihilate shit out of existence because her S3 is just not going to miss. The only thing that you're not going to be dealing with is stuff that has defense, which we'll see that a little later. But then going up into the next team right here, it's a Conqueror Lilius, a Death Dealer Ray, and a Navy Captain Landy. Get used to seeing this. We actually see this a fair number of times. So basically the thing is, you're more than likely going to assume the Conqueror Lilius is going to go first. Because of that, that's why Moon Bunny's here, gives us the skill null, gives us the immunity, but then Death Dealer Ray goes, who then activates his S3, does sleep, but then this is why we have Dragon King Sharoon here, who is there simply to give us Cascade and to make it so that our uh, martial artist Ken can actually still do shit. Literally the only reason why those two are actually comboing together. So because that other team was fast, okay, cool. This gives me the opportunity to give myself attack buff onto my martial artist Ken, so I can do shit like this. I did a little bit of damage, so that's how it all goes down. Hoorah! So, we're going to see the same team yet again, except it's going to be a little bit slightly different just because LOL speed. But, like, hey, we'll get there when we get there. So now we're going up against a Zeo and Icarina, and then also a Savior Aiden, I believe. I believe, yeah, we were fighting a lot of the same stuff today. Yeah, it's also a Savior Aiden. So the big thing that I did in particular is I brought Sinful Angelica just in case this was, like, a super, super ridiculously fast Savior Aiden, and then I would use rule of light to bring the sinful angelica back that is quite literally the only reason why i brought this particular comp not going for it for any sake of doing any of the uh anti-revive tech that's not even the reason why she's there it's just as a means of oh what if the savior aiden was fast turns out the savior aiden was slow because of that well that just kind of lets me go in and kind of do some killing <laughs> which is exactly what we do. Shaltier goes into the Savior Aiden, pretty much one taps her, and then because we still do a metric shitload of damage with the guaranteed dual attack that we're given with, Shal with uh, Sinful Angelica into the Zeo, we pretty much two tap him through DFI, which is not bad. That's actually kind of standard, you would imagine. But, hey, cool, works for us. Now all we have left is uh, Icarina. Now, Icarina is no longer a threat because even though... Um, she is blue and, you know, Shaltier is red. The thing is, Shaltier is pretty much going to always have stealth. So, other than turn one, if it is a fast Icarina, that's the only means of which she's going to take the damage, as well as the splash damage from her S3. It's the only way that she's even going to hurt the Shaltier. But, after you get through turn one, and if you have, like, you know, revive shenanigans like I have here, um, you're pretty much just free reign to go into her until you eventually get to your S3 again, because that's your guaranteed hit. Your S1s are going to be doing chip damage that also injure the enemy, and, um, yeah, you're kind of just free reign to go in until you get this a wonderful opportunity to go in and put a nice big hole through Icarina. Feels fucking good, man. And now... We're going into the same team yet again. So Conqueror Lilius, Navy Captain Landy, and Death Dealer Ray. However, the difference this time is this Death Dealer Ray is on a counter set and is thus really, really fucking slow. So I didn't get the opportunity to use, like, you know, Dragon King Sharoon to go in here because I was expecting, you know, Death Dealer Ray to be fast. Didn't happen. Okay, well, whatever. Let's see if we can try to put him to sleep. We didn't. In fact, I'm not even paying attention to my own footage right now. 
Oh yeah, so he didn't have uh, immort uh, he didn't have immunity right there. So I tried to put him to sleep with the um, Moon Bunny. Didn't work. Eh, whatever. Shit happens. So now that he's able to do his thing, now Dragon King Sharon's able to go off with the S3, and we sh we don't have access to you know attack buff on martial artist Ken. However, lucky for us, we get um, you know salvoed right here. Now we're within Sigurd Scythe range, and the one who crit was the Navy Captain Landy. She has Death Break. She's fucking dead. Now all that we have left to do is just use S3, go into the rest of the team, and shazams! Well, it didn't kill him, but, like, hey, did a lot of damage. Because, like, hey, now that all that's left is Conquer Lilius and uh, Death Dealer Ray, like, yo, straight up, just Dragon King Sharoon itself is so detrimental to Death Dealer Ray comps that, like, just her existing on the field is so bad for the team. It hurts is <laughs> significantly bad. And then also, whenever there's Conquer or Lilius as well, when you utilize Moon Bunny shenanigans, you straight up never have to worry about the extra turn proc shenanigans and any of the sleeps that are going to be going in. Feels good, man. And now on to the uh, final team here. Yeah, we're blazing through this shit, huh? So then it's a Conqueror Lilius, an Icarina, and a Death Dealer Ray. So for this one in particular, I was like, okay, well, let's just do the same fucking shit. So Moon Bunny Dominiel, pretty much for the simple fact that, hey, Conqueror Lilius is going to go first. We'll get all of our cleansing stuff in, and then we're going to get stripped here. But then Dragon King Sharoon kicks in. Now, here's where shit got, like, a little bit weird is... Well, not weird, it's just the fact that we're really fucking unlucky. So we go in with the S3 right here. We do not get the death break or any of, like, you know, the turn reduction shit onto the Icarina. So then we're going into her with a barrier right there. So we do significantly less damage. And, I mean, hey, thankfully we had Cascade, so we at least did fucking something. But then we go in with the S3 and Shazams. This does not kill. However, it's so low, I was like, well, I could S3, but you know what? This should do it, and it absolutely does. So, now with Icarina dead, pretty much, yeah, it's uh, the last fight that we just recently did. It's just a matter of we have to wait just a tiny bit longer to get to uh, Rimuru's turns to go into the team. Like, yeah, Rimuru is mad fucking scary in the damage that he does because additional damage in this game is uh, pants-shittingly retarded. I firmly believe that. I think, like, additional damage is kind of ridiculous because it's just straight-up true damage that you kind of can't really do anything about. But, like, hey, that's pretty much all we got to deal with now. So, it's just a matter of, hey, bide your time till you get to your turns. Because, hey, luckily for us, Rimuru is, like, a really, really super based unit in general anyway. So, he gets his turns somewhat quickly. And also, like, you know, because he has Analyze and Assess, so that also pushes him up on the CR bar. We have Dragon King Sharoon here for every S1 that she does because he has the highest attack. He's also getting pushed that way as well. Just a lot of things going in our favor in this particular situation. Now, for the next team... I'll briefly run it down real quick, but then I'll also explain what I should have done and what I could have done. So we're going to use Shaltier for the next fight. And things don't go well. And I knew things weren't going to go well. But hey, hey, you got to go on ahead and do these tests whenever you're debuting shit. So I see an Unbound Knight Arrowell, a, a Navy Captain Landy, and an uh, Urban Shadow Shoe. The big thing that I saw while looking at this is, well, what if I go on ahead and try to run it down and do some buff stripping with, uh, with Politus? Well, the problem with that is, I did not take into account the amount of buffs that the Arrowell was going to have, and I also did not take into account how much HP this Arrowell was. That is 33k, by the way. She survives the dreaded S1, S3 from Genua, because... I just straight up didn't go into it, like, you know, well enough. I didn't do anywhere near enough damage. I didn't have attack buff at the start either. So right here, I'm like, well, fuck. I guess I'll try and see if I can kill this Urban Shadow Shoe, and then also see if I can kill the Unbound Knight Arrowell at the same time. And lo and behold, we do not. So then this attack goes in, kills Genua, and then we eventually get completely murdered by Navy Captain Landy counter, uh, counter Salvo shenanigans. Because that's quite literally the biggest thing that is Shaltier's biggest weakness, is Counter Salvo. That will fuck you up, and it will fuck you up bad. Now, two other ways I could have fought this. I could have done this with the Oxlots Arunka scenario. I easily could have done that, because the Navy Captain Landy didn't have an in insanely huge amount of HP. And the other thing that I could have done... I could have done Knockwall shenanigans. Literally any mage, hey, TML, Sylvan Sage Vivian, Knockwall, and then Strays. Would have fucking made this shit free. But hey, I'm just fucking retarded. So, with that being said, hey guys, let's go ahead and go do a quick rundown of the balance patch notes. I only have about a minute and a half, and I'll see if I can do it. If you want real, like, actual breakdowns of this shit, go watch I'm Sue. He did this shit significantly better. So, hey, Blood Moon Haste, what's the big thing with him? Motherfucker becomes an anti-cleave super nuker. 
which is pretty based. So Sage <laughs> Ball and Sezen, basically, hey, um, the 85% becomes 100%. So hey, a little bit of consistency. Ravi got a metric fucking shitload of changes. The biggest ones in particular are just the fact that like, hey, she's an attack scaler who's basically like a secret HP scaler now. Which is really weird. Just go read the patch notes. Basically what this means is she's an HP scaler but actually scales off attack so you can injure her but she still does decent damage. It's kind of weird and kind of hard to explain, but that's basically what it is. And then a whole bunch of other shit changed about him as well. Then there's Kane. Kane um, still looks like he sucks. On paper, conceptually, he still he looks a lot better because it no longer means that you have to have bleeds on the enemy to actually have him fucking do something. But the real problem with Kane is the fact that he doesn't really do damage. His damage is kind of shit. And then we go on to Bologna. Bologna's big thing is um, literally just more damage. That's basically all they did to Bologna. She'd do more damage now. Now, Celine got some mad cool shit. She is the stealth queen now, and she will be doing lots of damage with that, as well as getting free souls on blank. And then the other thing was, last piece, Corinne, um, basically she just does a lot more damage, but it's really good. Alexa's Basket, hey, consistency on attack buff and then Abyssal Crown, you get more stuns. Holy fucking shit, I did it. Hey, LOL. If you guys like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe.